five dating mistakes stopping men from chasing you. Number one, energy. The reality is the confident girls get chased and the shy girls get mistreated. Not because shy girls are less important is the reason they get mistreated. Confidence in oneself communicates outwardly to other people that you see the value in yourself. And the men find it difficult to see the value in a woman who doesn't seem to see the value in herself. Let's say you see two guys at a party. One guy is seven foot tall and he looks like a supermodel, right? He's got a chiseled face, chiseled jawline. He's got a hard body, hard body, but he's in the corner shriveled up and he's got his drink in his hand like this and he's looking down and his eyes are shifting and he can't look anybody in the eye. He can't even look up. He's like so scared. Looks like he's about to poop his pants at this party sitting in the corner. Guy number two is five foot eight and he has a dad bod. He's in the center of the party. He's got everyone surrounding him and he's telling a story to everyone. And the whole party is tuned in on this story. He's got them laughing. He's got them crying. He's got them hysterical. People are hugging him. People are like, oh my God, I missed you. You'd I'm talking about girls and guys. He's not being obnoxious. He's just being himself, but he's talking and people are paying attention and he, and, and the whole party is gravitating towards him. Which one do you think is stimulating your squirtle more? And let's be honest here. Majority of us would be more attracted to person number two, even though they've got a dad bod, even though they're five foot eight, because common sense would tell you, oh, the more attractive person should be the seven foot supermodel by far. If that was the case, then it wouldn't even be a competition between the seven foot supermodel and the five foot nine short guy. If it was really just about people's looks, then the seven foot shy guy who's super awkward and doesn't talk to anyone should win all the time every day should shoot a hundred percent. There should be no one that considers the five foot nine average short king. If that's the case, that people are willing to overlook the fact that someone is five foot nine short with a dad bod simply because they're a confident, outgoing, fun person, that should tell you energy and personality trumps physical traits. And it's the same thing for men. The energy they receive from a woman is even more important than what they actually look like. Because like I said, when you exude that confident energy, it communicates to other people, you're someone who sees the value in yourself. That's why you carry around that confidence. The men absorb that, whether this be on a conscious or subconscious level, and they say to themselves, oh, I got to chase after the girl who is confident because her confidence has to stem from her value. That's the reason why they're always chasing after the supermodel or chasing after the OnlyFans girl or chasing after the IG model, because to them, those women are exuding confidence in themselves. Maybe it might be a little bit misguided in some place, in some ways, which makes those men feel, oh my God, she's so confident in herself. She must see the value in herself. Oh, I see the value in you too. They have confidence in the fact that you have confidence in yourself. So they know that that confidence must come from the fact that you have actual value. So then they also believe that you have actual value. And so my point being, you can inspire a man to chase you simply by changing your and adjusting your energy. It's not all about having the biggest dump truck. It's not all about having the smallest waist because your energy can be adjusted and you can get these men to chase you. But the problem is you don't come across as someone who believes they are hot and sexy and worth being chased after. So why would those men feel that way about you if you don't feel that way about yourself? If you don't feel confident within yourself, you need to begin doing things for yourself that make you feel confident and give you that confidence. Number two, we have your environment. Men will judge you based on the environment they meet you in. This is gonna be painful. Okay, let's get through it. You must be very careful that the environment you spend a lot of time in does not misrepresent or lower your value in his eyes. If he sees you as average or less valuable, he will not chase 
after you. I know that some of you guys love the dating apps and there's no diss towards dating apps. We've talked about dating apps in the past. Here's the problem though. When these guys are meeting you on dating apps, they are lumping you in with all the other thousands of women that are on the dating app. All he has to go by is your four or five pictures and maybe if on hinge a little voice note if you put one there in a sea of thousands of other women so what do you think that does to his view of you i'm going to give you guys the an, an example just so we can be on the same page if you are consistently on dating apps and a man only has to swipe right on you send you a few good messages and then gain access to you and eventually go on a date with you he will not feel like he had to work very hard for you that's just the honest truth he will come to the subconscious conclusion that you n must not be that valuable if he didn't have to work that hard to get you he will stop chasing you if he ever even started in the first place i know dating apps weren't created to be a bad thing the same way i know the club wasn't created to be a bad thing i'm not saying that if you do it you're the worst person ever but what i'm saying is let's be real when you put yourself in that position, in that environment, you're put, you're lumping yourself alongside all the other women who are also participating or part of that environment. So if you don't like how that environment represents you because of how all the other women are uh, acting or behaving in that environment or what people think of women in that environment, you must change your environment. The same way if you met a man in a specific environment that would make you weary of the type of person he might be. Where does that come from? That comes from your experiences in life. You're probably gonna feel very differently if you met a guy at a grocery store who came up to you, gave you some nice conversation for a couple of minutes, and actually seemed pretty cool and genuine and then asked you if you wanted to go for free to go for coffee this week as opposed to meeting him on a dating app and him texting you the same thing hey you want to go out for coffee this week one would be much more memorable than the other you'd also have a very different viewpoint or understanding of that man based on how you met him even if it's the same man that's why i say the dating apps aren't bad because you can still meet great people on dating apps but what i want you to understand especially for you as a woman it comes to your detriment because you're trying to get the man to chase you you're trying to get the man to see the value in you so when you put yourself in a situation where you're lumping yourself in with all these other thousands of women you're literally subconsciously telling him, hey, I'm average, just like everyone else you see on the dating app. And so you should treat me the same way you would treat all the other women you see on the dating app. So what does that mean you have to do? You've got to find other places to spend your time. Go on TikTok and literally search up things to do in and then whatever your city's name is or whatever the closest major city is to you if you live in a really really small town okay things to do in la things to do in new york things to do in london things to do in uh moscow things to do in uh manchester and there are literally content creators that make videos where they show you all these different small cool spots that you can go to to spend your time and have fun that isn't just the club or a bar scroll through those figure out one that you like and grab a friend don't go there with the intention of oh when i go there the first time i better meet the man of my dreams just go there because you enjoy that place and you want to have fun and enjoy yourself and your life you'll be shocked the moments and the people that you'll meet have you noticed that before dating apps, everyone has this random story of how one day they just woke up and they usually never take this way to the subway, but this one day they decide to take a different route to the subway and on their way to the different route to the subway, they stopped at a coffee shop and on their way stopping at the coffee shop in front of them was their, you know, eventual partner. And then their eventual partner dropped something on the floor. And then, you know, she helped pick the hue out, picked it up. And then when you picked it up, you guys had a conversation and that conversation led to a, led to a dinner date. And then that dinner date ended up you guys being married for 50 years. Have you ever noticed that before dating apps, everyone's story seemed to be this random occurrence 
that happened out of what seemed like coincidence. And so my point being is the same random occurrences, because they're not really that random, if they're always happening to everyone, the same random occurrences happen when you take action and you actually step out, out of your house and you go and do things, right? And meet people and have conversations. You end up experiencing something that you never could have sat down and wrote down, well, today I'm going to take the, 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 a different way to the subway and I'm going to stop at a coffee shop and at the coffee shop, the person in front of me is going to drop their keys and then we're going to meet and we're going to have a conversation. You would never be able to write that story. But the story is out there, but it requires you to actually go out and do things. Number three is accessibility. If you make yourself too easily accessible to men, they will not feel like they need to chase after you. In their mind, your accessibility represents your value to the world. I'm just telling you the truth of how the men think about it. The only way you would be free or available at all times in their mind is if you had nothing to do with your life or no one else trying to get your time. That's why it's so important to manage your accessibility to the men that you're dating. We all like people. I've liked people too. And so when you like someone, you want to be available to them 24 seven. If they call you at 3 AM, you want to be available 2 AM. You want to be available for, for uh, 4 PM. You want to be available. You want to be available to them and drop everything that you have going on for them all the time. Here's the problem though, especially at the beginning of these relationships, when you're setting the groundwork for the rest of the relationship, you're trying to inspire him to chase after you. And so the reality of it is, it's not a good environment when he feels like there's no competition for your time. And I'm not just talking about competition with other men, although that's good, but I'm also talking about competition for your time in your own life, meaning like work, your passions, the things that you, your hobbies, your other friendships, your girlfriend, like your family, all of that stuff, right? Is taking up your time and energy, even though you like him, even though you guys are building a relationship, he wants to feel, I'm telling you, the man wants to feel like there is a concentrated amount of effort and work that is required from him in order to gain access to you. There has to be a motivation behind his reasoning for chasing you. If you're always available to him, you're taking away that motivation that he can feel to continue chasing. I have an example here, right? A man who's gone on two dates with you starts calling you at 1 a.m and asking you to come over once you establish that he can call you anytime and you'll be there at a moment's notice he begins to only call you late at night or to see you last minute because he quickly realizes hey i don't have to plan with her i don't have to plan a date I don't even have to take her somewhere nice. I don't got to spend money on the date. I know I want to extract Squirtle from her. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it with the least amount of effort required from me. And I know she's not going to push back on that because she will drop everything for, for me. And she's not going to, uh, there's no one else competing for her time. Not even family, not even friends, not even her, her hobbies or her passions or her work. I can call her over whenever I want, have her with me for as long as I want utilize her for as long as I feel like utilizing her and then discard of her when I no longer want or need access to her. And then what also happens is when he, in the, and while he's discarded of you, he doesn't even think of you. You don't even come across his mind because why would he think of you? He has no reason to. The next time he does think of you, it'll be because he wants you right now in this second. And so what will he do? He'll call you right now in this second and what will you do you'll come over right now in this second but you're creating this environment where he doesn't have to chase after you he doesn't have to plan for you he doesn't have to come up with amazing ideas of cool dates he doesn't have to schedule his his life or his work or his or his week schedule around what you're doing all of those things make him feel like he's not working for his access to you and or working for you in general 
And if he doesn't feel like he's working for you in general, he's not going to see that value in you. And like I said, the value is not just all your looks, you know, having a dump truck. He's not going to see that value in you. And when he doesn't see that value in you, he's not going to chase after you. So if you want to combat that, because I like giving you guys actionable items, you need to find things you enjoy doing or in the worst case scenario, just fake being busy. I'm so serious. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm so serious. So that he must plan ahead and really wow you in order to get you to look his way and to keep your attention. This is how guys want you to treat them. I, I know it sounds weird. I know. I know. I tr trust me. Listen to me. Listen. Look in my eyes. I know that it sounds weird because you're thinking to yourself, what men don't want that they want it to be super easy and peaceful and me to not do anything or complain and i'll just see him whenever and he'll have access to me whenever that's what will make him the happiest not really to be honest you know how they always say oh, oh women don't know what they want they can't make decisions the men don't know what they actually want either and what i mean by that is they might say they want something but they don't know how they actually respond when they get it because in reality, the best response you receive from them is by a lot of times by doing the things they don't say they say they don't want as weird as it sounds. So when they say, oh, my God, I don't want a woman who's too busy. Oh, my God, I don't want a woman who thinks she's she's the it girl. Oh, my God, I don't want a woman who thinks she's hot, hot stuff. But in reality, they chase after the women who think they're hot stuff. They chase after the women who are too busy for them. They chase after the women who who don't give them the time of day and the women who are who are foolish enough to actually believe the words coming out of the guy's mouth that oh i just want you to shut up sit down not say anything not talk and you know that'll be the best version of of a life to me where you know you don't give opinions you know you're accessible to me all the time you're available all the time all that good stuff get cheated on or get used number four we have standards now this is where you guys are going to have to take accountability and it's going to sting a little bit but you will grow because of the understanding your past relationships and the guys you allow inside you i told you this is going to sting represent your standards of men if he sees that you are dealing with bums he will assume you have no standards and so it is not a good reflection of him if he is one of your bum boyfriends he wants the fact that you picked him to me, he is one of the best. I had to realize this myself, even as a man. The people you put yourself inside as a man and vice versa that you let inside you as a woman are a representation of you. He stops being motivated to chase after you because he stops seeing the reward that he will receive, not just for getting you, but also for feeling like the man when he gets you. And I'm telling you, all this stuff is happening subconsciously. I'll give you guys an example. Let's say you're dating a guy and he finds out that all your previous exes were jobless, broke, unintelligent, useless men. He then realizes you have horrible taste in men and he sees himself as much better than those men, which means he sees himself as so much better than you. So he begins to disrespect you because your standards are a representation of how you feel about yourself. If my standards are low, that must be because I only believe I deserve very low quality, which is why I would accept low quality people into my life. You can have exes and they're still really high, high quality exes. If my standards are really high, that's because I believe I am only worthy of high quality men if you meet a girl and she tells you that her last ex was a multi-millionaire you're probably going to think to yourself damn you there must be something special about you your last ex was a multi-millionaire he bought you all this stuff he did all this stuff for you just that fast it changes your viewpoint on them because you're like, oh my God, if your standard was multi-millionaire, who's your next man going to be? You, you're not, you, you can't go down from there. You're, you must be in this upper echelon of women where all the multi-millionaires want to be with you. And that that's the, that's the only way they'll get access to you because they realize, hey, you um, actually accept bums into your life. And so why do I need to hold myself to a standard? Why do I need to chase after you? Why am I putting in a whole bunch of work to get you? There's no competition here. The competition is a bunch of people who are jobless, 
gamer boys, soy boys who sit on the couch and do nothing with their lives. Why me, a multimillionaire, why am I trying to be the one to get you? There's nothing to get. Anyone can get you, right? And I'm just saying that that's how they begin thinking on a subconscious level. So I'm sure you're like, okay, well, how do I change that? I've been, I've been giving my, I've been getting access to the bombs. Oh my God, what do I do now? Oh my God, I let all the bombs hit. Uh, all the men aren't going to want to chase after me. Okay, I'm going to give you some actionable items. Make sure the men you choose are a good representation of what you, you consider a high value man. I hate the word high value man because it's a buzzword. Nobody knows what it means anymore. Whatever you consider a high value man is, make sure that your partners are in line with that. Okay, simple. Don't settle for bums because you are lonely. Oh, I don't want to get mad now. Okay, I don't want to get mad. So I always talk to you guys about filling your holes, like not this hole, your heart hole and your mind hole, right? Your emotional holes and your voids because those voids will put you in a place where you're desperate for the validation and the attention or you're just lonely. And so because you're lonely and uh, you need someone to be with you, you will allow more low quality men into your life and into your squirtle. If you've already allowed the bums into your life, you must, must listen to me very carefully because I know some of you guys are in this position. You must clarify the bums would never even be able to look in your direction anymore. And that because you have leveled up, You've changed the way you view yourself, value yourself. You changed the way you go about life. These bums would never even be able to dream of having access to you. Make that so crystal clear. He can see his reflection in it so that he's of the understanding that while you might have made that mistake of allowing bums to be in your life in the past, that mistake, look how wide my eyes are, that mistake will never happen again so that he can feel good about oh okay she was with some bums but the bums ain't having no access she's a different type of girl she's on another level now those bums couldn't even look, like i don't care if you diss them diss them if you got diss them talk about how raggedy they are talk about how you would never even allow them they're the scum of the earth you wouldn't even allow them to to, to clean your shoes like you really have to put emphasis on it so that he is of the understanding that they you don't do that. That's not the quality you accept into your life any longer. And you got to hammer that home. Number five is predictability. Men don't like when you become overly predictable. Specifically, they do not want you to become so agreeable all the time that you never have a difference of opinion or thought. I know some of you guys are like, but I thought guys want peace, but I thought guys want a girl who, you know, won't give them any problems. I thought guys want a girl who's submissive and quiet. And I know that's what you thought. But what I'm telling you is how to get a guy to chase you is not by being the most agreeable, nicest, excuse me, nicest, kindest person in the world. Because being so agreeable all the time turns you into someone who is predictable. I can easily predict that you're just going to agree with whatever I say. I'll give you guys an example. After three weeks of dating a new guy, you want so badly for him to like you that you try to be as easy to get along with as possible. So you suppress most of your thoughts and opinions, hoping that he will like you because you are so easy going. Eventually, he begins to disrespect you because he sees how little you're willing to speak up for yourself because you're trying so hard to be agreeable and not say anything so that you're liked. Why would he ever try to maneuver himself or put himself in a position that he can ensure you like him the most? You're not really going to have an opinion or a thought or a perspective of your own. You're not going to be an individual. So I know that whatever I say goes, goes, you ain't going to have any back talk about it. You ain't going to even give a different perspective as me. You're not even like a real human. You're just like a shadow, an empty shell of a human. And I can project onto you whatever I want to project onto you. And you won't bat an eye because you want him so badly to like you. Remember, right? You're seeking that validation. You want him so badly to like you that you're scared if you say anything or do anything that he doesn't like or do something that you want that he might not agree with. Oh my God, he won't like you anymore. He'll break up with you and he'll go find another girl. And you're in so much fear 
of that happening, you're trying your best to be agreeable and everything and not have any real opinions or not have any real perspective. But all that does to you is serve you as uh, as do a disservice to you because then he no longer sees you as an individual. The men want to see you as a whole individual with your own unique perspective, thoughts and feelings. They do not want you to become so predictable and agreeable that you become an empty shell because then they can no longer see you as a whole individual, which means there's nothing to work for. There's nothing to work towards. And so his motivation for trying to chase after you is completely gone because what is he chasing after? 